हेलो स्टूडेंट्स वेलकम टू ई पी जी पाठशाला आई एम डॉक्टर विश्वनाथ तिवारी फ्रॉम सेंट्रल यूनिवर्सिटी ऑफ राजस्थान टुडे आई एम गोइंग टू टॉक अबाउट इंट्रोडक्शन ऑफ इलेक्ट्रॉन ट्रांसपोर्ट सिस्टम फ्रॉम द पेपर थर्मोडाइनमिक्स ऑफ लिविंग सिस्टम एंड बायोनर्जेटिक्स द ऑब्जेक्टिव ऑफ दिस मॉड्यूल इज टू अंडरस्टैंड द स्ट्रक्चर ऑफ डिफरेंट इलेक्ट्रॉन कैरियर दैट इज प्रजेंट इन इलेक्ट्रॉन ट्रांसपोर्ट सिस्टम this module has been divided into following section the first one you will have introduction of different electron transport system then we have we will discuss about structure of mitochondria then we will discuss about the different electron transport carriers such as ubiquinon nadh and other electron carrier that is found in the electron transport system and in the end we will discuss about different complexes that is found in the mitochondrial electron transport system so first of all as you know that atp synthesis is very important for the survival of the organism no organism can survive in absence of atp and you also know that atp synthesis takes place in mitochondrial inner membrane bacterial membrane at the same time it also synthesizes in the chloroplast thylakoid membrane electron transport system that is very important in the energy production or atp synthesis in bacteria mitochondria and thylakoid chloroplast so electron transport system is a significant component of understanding the atp synthesis in these three system energy production takes place by three mechanism the first mechanism is substrate level atp synthesis where the substrate is involved in the atp synthesis the second one is oxidative phosphorylation where the atp synthesis takes place in presence of oxygen the third one is photophosphorylation where the atp synthesis take place in the presence of light phosphorylation is important because when we are producing atp that is produced from adp so atp combines with the phosphate and producing atp so therefore we are saying atp synthesis as a phosphorylation step so thus in the substrate level phosphorylation we does not require any electron transport system but when we are talking about oxidative phosphorylation and photophosphorylation we requires electron transport system substrate level phosphorylation takes place in glycolysis where the phosphate is donated by substrate of glycolysis to the adp and then we will finally produce atps electron transport system is required in oxidative phosphorylation that is taking place in the mitochondrial inner membrane as well as photophosphorylation that is taking place in the chloroplast electron trans when you talking about electron transport system electron transport system has a number of mobile and non mobile carriers when you are talking about mobile carrier that means they can move from one part of mitochondrial inner membrane to other part of the mitochondrial inner membrane or in the chloroplast thylakoid membrane when we are talking about non mobile electron carrier that means they will not move in the mitochondrial inner membrane as well as in chloroplast thylakoid membrane one term that is always used to define the energy producing membrane and that is known as energy transducing membrane so mitochondrial inner membrane as well as thylakoid membrane is also known as energy transducing membranes therefore it is very important to understand to discuss what is electron transport system and it is also important to discuss what are the different mobile electron carrier are non mobile electron carrier present into the mitochondrial inner membrane 
that is considered as a model to discuss electron transport system in this module. Before going into the detail of electron transport basic, it is important to understand the structure of mitochondria. So, mitochondria is also known as powerhouse of the cell because they are responsible for production of ATP that is chemical energy of the cell. Mitochondria consist of two membranes as you can see in the picture is outer membrane and inner membrane. Intermembrane space it is a space between two membranes and then matrix. So basically matrix is separated by mitochondrial inner membrane from the periplasmic space. It also have ribosomes, it have its own DNA, that's why it is semi-autonomous. So inner mitochondrial membrane have different complexes that is responsible for ATP synthesis. Those complexes are complex first, second, third, fourth, fifth. But if you see the orientation of the complexes in the inner membrane, so all the complexes are arranged in such a way that proton transfer take place from matrix to intermembrane space except the complex 5 which arrange in such a way that it will transfer proton from intermembrane space to back into the matrix. Inner mitochondrial membrane also have electron carriers. These electron carriers are very important for the transfer of electron between two complexes. There are different electron carrier that is found in electron transport system of mitochondria. They includes ubiquinone, NADH, FADH2, cytochrome and iron sulfur centers. Ubiquinone are two electron carriers while cytochromes, iron sulfur center are one electron carrier. At the same time, NADH and FADH2, which is itself is an electron donor, they are also two electron carrier. So the first electron carrier that is very important carrier that is ubiquinone. So ubiquinone exists in three redox form. Redox form are one that is interconverted by accepting or donating the electrons. So the first form of ubiquinone is fully oxidized form that is known as ubiquinone. The second form is semiquinone. As I already told that ubiquinone is a carrier of two electron. So if one electron is taken by ubiquinone, it is converted into semiquinone. If the second electron is also taken by semiquinone, then it is converted into fully reduced ubiquinone. That means if you want to convert fully oxidized ubiquinone into fully reduced ubiquinone, you need to have two electron. That can come either from NADH, either from FADH2 or any other sources. Ubiquinone is completely oxidized or completely reduced within the mitochondrial inner membrane. Therefore, it is a very important carrier of electron in the electron transport chain. You can see in the structure where we have isoprenoid unit. So, the number of isoprenoid unit that is present in the ubiquinone is differ in different organisms but they always have similar type of structure. The another electron carrier is iron sulfur protein. As the name suggests, it have iron, it have sulfur and it is protein, so it also have amino acid. So iron sulfur proteins are metalloprotein that carries iron ion bridged by sulfide ion and coordinated with the four cysteine ligands or two cysteine ligand and two histidine ligand. 
in the case of risky iron centers which is found in the complex third it is important to note here that we have sulfur as well as sulfide ion so this sulfide ion is additional to the cysteine sulfurs that is present in the sulfur hydride groups and iron sulfur centers or iron sulfur proteins are one electron carrier based on the number of iron and sulfur atom present in the iron sulfur center it is either 2Fe2S center where we have 2 iron 2 sulfur 4 cysteine and remaining that protein part 3Fe3S center where we have 3 sulfur 3 iron and 4 cysteine and remaining protein part 4Fe4S where we have 4 sulfur 4 iron and 4 cysteine and remaining protein part here you can see in how iron and sulfur atom are associated with each other in 2Fe2S iron sulfur center and how the 4 sulfur that is coming from the sulfur hydro group of cysteine is also involved in the reaction it is important to note that when we have iron sulfur center or another word you can say risky iron sulfur center then we don't have two sulfur because we have histidine there so we have two sulfidyl group coming from the cysteine and two nitrogen that is coming from the histidine because of difference in the structure of risky iron sulfur center they will have different redox potential as compared to the other iron sulfur centers other electron carriers that is found in the mitochondrial inner membrane are cytochromes cytochrome contains heme protein which is responsible for making the stability of the structure of the cytochrome and they also have iron which is responsible for carrying the electrons so iron which is found in the cytochromes they exist in two forms fe3 form and fe2 form as you know that electron have negative charge so if electron is accepted by iron it is converted into plus 2 form but if electron is donated by the cytochrome then fe2 plus is converted into fe3 plus so in this way by converting fe2 plus into fe3 plus that cytochrome is going to carry one electron similarly nadh and fadh both can accept two electron and converted into NADH plus H plus and FADH2. Ubiquinone, NADH and FADH2 as well as FMNH2 are two electron carrier while cytochrome B, cytochrome C, cytochrome A, cytochrome A3 these all are electron carriers which is found in the electron transport system are one electron carrier along with the iron sulfur centers. You can see the structure of NAD plus and you can see the structure of FAD. So FAD is derived from vitamin riboflavin and NAD is derived from nicotinamide. When you are talking about the mitochondrial inner membrane, there are five complexes found in the mitochondrial inner membrane. The first complex is known as NADH dehydrogenase. The second complex is known as succinate dehydrogenase. The third complex is known as cytochrome BC1 complex. The fourth complex is known as cytochrome oxidase. And the fifth complex is known as ATP synthase. Out of these five complexes, the first four complex are responsible for the proton pump. And the fifth complex is responsible for the ATP synthesis. So we have two reducing equivalents NADH and FADH2. NADH giving its electron to the complex first. So the electron transfer takes place in complex starting from the complex first when it comes from NADH. Electron transfer that taking place starting from the complex second comes from FADH2. So we will discuss how NADH giving its electron to the complex first and how this electron coming from NADH is responsible for the proton pump 
in different complexes and ATP synthesis. We will also discuss how this FADS2 giving its electron to the complex second and what is the path of electron transfer in the different complexes and ATP synthesis starting from FADS2. You can see the four electron transfer carriers which is found in the mitochondrial inner membrane. At the same time, you can also see complex 5, which is a proton pump channel. When you are talking about the complex first, complex first have FMN as electron carrier, iron sulfur center as electron carrier, and ubiquinon, which is a final electron acceptor of this complex. So, NADH, which is produced in various metabolic pathways are utilized by the complex first. So, electron from NADH pass to FMN. So, NADH undergoes oxidation and FMN undergoes reduction. Similarly, when FMN give its electron to iron sulfur center, it get oxidized and iron sulfur center get reduced. An electron finally reached to the ubiquinone one by one. As you know that iron sulfur center is one electron carrier. So they will transfer two electron of NADH one by one. So we will have finally transfer of two electron from NADH to the ubiquinone and that will have production of reduced ubiquinone. During this process some proton are pumped. The mechanism of proton pump will be discussed in the next modules. The ubiquinone which is produced in the complex first give its electron to the complex third. So in the complex third, we have different electron carriers. Two electron from ubiquinone is given to the cytochrome C one by one. So first reduce ubiquinone giving its first electron to iron sulfur center and then iron sulfur center give that electron to cytochrome c1 and then cytochrome c1 give its electron to the cytochrome c but after giving elect one electron to iron sulfur center the same equinone will be produced similarly same equinone give its electron to cytochrome bl which give its electron to cytochrome bh and finally cytochrome bh give its electron to the oxidized ubiquinone which is converted into semiquinone so net result of electron transfer by one reduced ubiquinone is production of one cytochrome c and one semiquinone the second reduced ubiquinone give its electron again in the similar fashion to the cytochrome C but the same equinone which is produced here giving its electron to the same equinone via cytochrome BH, cytochrome BL and then that same equinone which is produced is converted into reduced ubiquinone. So net effect is we will use to reduce ubiquinone and producing two cytochrome C and we are regenerating one reduce ubiquinone. So the net effect is we are going to produce two cytochrome C each one of having one electron and this cycle is known as Q cycle because ubiquinone is recyclized. Then two cytochrome C which is produced in the complex third giving its electron to the complex 4. But during the electron transfer in the complex third, we will also pump proton from matrix to intermembrane space. The two cytochrome C produced here, giving its electron to the complex 4. So the copper A is the first carrier of the complex 4, which is accepting the electron from cytochrome C. It will transfer it to the copper B via cytochrome a and cytochrome A3 and finally the two electron one by one 
from cytochrome C will reach to the oxygen and oxygen is converted into H2O. During this process, again the proton pump takes place. So when we are starting electron transfer from NADH, complex first pump proton, complex third pump protons and complex four pump proton and only these three complex are involved in the electron transfer starting from NADH. At the same time, when we are starting electron transfer from succinate or FADH2, then complex second involves and complex second give its electron to the complex third via ubiquinone and then complex third give its electron to the complex four via cytochrome C. So during this process, starting from FADH2 or succinate, only complex third and complex four is going to pump the protons. So when proton pump from matrix to intermembrane space, in the intermembrane space, they all proton are accumulated and once they are coming back, they are coming by a ATP synthase which is fifth complex and then during this proton transfer, the ATP synthesis take place in the complex five. We have discussed how complex first is involved in the electron transfer and what are the different electron carrier of complex first. So during the electron transfer in the complex first, the standard redox potential difference will be created and that is converted into Gibbs free energy and that Gibbs free energy helps complex first to pump proton from matrix to intermembrane space. At the same time, they will also produce one reduced ubiquinone. It is very important point to note that premature leakage to oxygen occur in the complex first. So this is a major site for the production of reactive oxygen species. Complex second have FADS2, iron sulfur center and ubiquinone as electron carrier. The important point of the complex second is that it is not a transmembrane complex and the redox difference which is created in this complex are low. These two reasons makes this complex unable to pump any proton but electron transfer in the complex second leads to the production of reduced ubiquinone that is used by complex third. So any ATP that is produced starting from FADS2 is only produced because of involvement of complex third and complex four. Complex third have a set of electron carrier such as risky iron sulfur center, cytochrome B, cytochrome C1 and cytochrome C. They all are involved in the electron transfer of complex third. Told you, one ubiquinone give its electron to a risky iron sulfur center and finally to the cytochrome C via cytochrome C1. And second electron of ubiquinone is transferred to the cytochrome B, which finally produces a semiquinone. And during the utilization of second molecule of reduced ubiquinone, we will produce again one more cytochrome C molecule and the semiquinone is finally converted into reduced ubiquinone. Therefore, the net result of electron transfer in the complex third will be utilization of two reduced ubiquinone molecule and production of two cytochrome C molecule. The cytochrome C molecule will transfer its electron to complex four and during electron transfer in the complex third, the redox potential is created which pumps two proton from matrix to intermembrane space. Electron from complex third reached to the complex four via cytochrome C and passed through electron carrier copper A, cytochrome A, cytochrome A3 and copper B. The oxygen atom is the last electron acceptor of complex four get reduced into H2O and during the electron transfer, the standard redox potential created in the complex four will be responsible for pumping four proton from matrix to intermembrane space. Therefore, 
if electrons start from NADH, then it can pump 10 proton from matrix to intermembrane space by involving complex first, third, and fourth. While if electron transfer start from FADH2, it will pump 6 proton by involving complex second, third, and fourth. Complex 5. Complex 5 is also known as ATP synthase. It consists of two major subunits FO, which stand for oligomycin sensitive, and F1. And stoichiometry of this complex is alpha 3, beta 3, gamma, delta, epsilon. These are the part of F1. And FO consists of A, B2, C9 to 12. C9 to 12 means the number of units of C varies in different and different organisms. You can see this structure where you can locate the presence of A subunit, B subunit, C subunit of FO and other remaining alpha, beta, gamma, delta, epsilon of F1. You can see that C subunit and A subunit, they are basically membrane bound subunit and A subunit linking the B subunit and B subunit linked with the delta subunit. So, when proton transfer takes place, it always pass between the spaces created between A subunit and C subunit. And movement of this proton is responsible for the function of this complex. As you can see from structure of ATP synthase or FOF1 complex, ATP synthase can be functionally divided into rotator and stator. Rotator consists of C subunit, gamma subunit, epsilon subunit. Stator consists of alpha subunit, beta subunit, delta subunit, A subunit and B subunit. When we are talking about the function, these two independent functional units work together. So, the movement of proton from intermembrane space to the matrix via ATP synthase leads to the rotation of rotator in one direction that develops torque into the beta subunit. As you remember, the beta subunit is a part of F1 complex. So, the torque developed into the beta subunit is responsible for the ATP synthesis. What is the mechanism of this ATP synthesis? That will be explained by binding chains mechanism. And what is the reason of this proton pump from intermembrane space to back into the matrix will be discussed in the next module. The binding chains mechanism is used to explain ATP synthesis. In this mechanism, torque developed by the movement of rotator will be responsible for conformational change in the ATP synthase. And beta subunit exist in three conformation you can see in the picture one conformation is open conformation which doesn't have anything other conformation is loose conformation which have adp plus pi and third conformation is tight conformation which have atp when three proton moves from intermembrane space to back into the matrix the sufficient torque is developed which causes conformation change in the beta subunit. Therefore, if you want a beta subunit to convert from one conformation to other conformation, you have to pump three proton from intermembrane space back into the matrix. Therefore, for changing all the three conformation, we need nine protons. So, same nine proton is utilized for synthesis of 1 ATP by 1 ATP synthase. But if you remember the structure of ATP synthase, there are 3 beta subunits. So, the same 9 proton also utilize for the production of 2 more ATPs. Therefore, we can say that a total of 3 proton are required for synthesis of 1 ATP because 9 proton produces 3 ATPs. One additional protons are required 
for fast speed transporters and that is mandatory when you want to your ATP synthesis to be continued therefore that will be also included in the number of proton required for one ATP synthesis therefore for all the calculation we are always considering four proton as a required number of proton for synthesis of one ATP so student let's summarize what we have learned from in this module so we have learned what are different electron carriers present in the mitochondrial inner membrane the carrier include complex first that is NADH dehydrogenase succinate dehydrogenase as complex second cytochrome BC1 complex as as complex third cytochrome oxidase as complex four so these four complexes are responsible for electron transfer when you are starting from NADH or FADH2. These electron transfer in these complexes are responsible for proton pump from matrix to intermembrane space. In the intermembrane space, the proton created two things. First, they have created electrochemical gradient. The second, they have created proton motive force. This electrochemical gradient and proton motive force together are responsible for backward movement of proton from intermembrane space to the matrix. And movement of proton from intermembrane space to the matrix is responsible for ATP synthesis. Now, this electron transfer in the different complexes creates proton movement. And the proton movement via ATP synthase create ATP synthesis. So the movement of proton from intermembrane space to the back into the matrix leads to the conformational changes in the ATP synthase, and that conformation changes are responsible for ATP synthesis in the beta subunit of ATP synthase. So when we are talking about ATP synthesis starting from NADH. So, NADH pumps 10 proton from matrix to intermembrane space including complex first, complex third and complex four. These 10 proton when come back from intermembrane space to back into the matrix, they will produce 2.5 ATP because 10 divided by 4 so is going to be 2.5. Similarly, when electrons transport start from FADH2, it will pump 6 proton from intermembrane, from matrix to intermembrane space and these 6 proton are responsible for 1.5 ATP. Please remember one thing, we can produce either 2 ATPs or 3 ATPs, either 1 ATPs or 2 ATP. So we will not able to produce 2.5 ATP but we are saying 2.5 and 1.5 to make it clear about number of proton that is pumped from matrix to intermembrane space and ATP synthesized by ATP synthesis. Thank you.